Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. During the last season I gathered some data on some of the first objects that I photographed. And uh, now I thought I would uh, present the uh, first object and the uh, processing that led up to that image. So in this video we're going to take a look at Coldwell 49 or the Rosette Nebula with a total of 22.3 hours with the processing in PixInsight for an SHO image with SHO stars. Jumping right into PixInsight, first of all we are going to take a look at the old Rosette Nebula that I did 2022. So this is uh, SHO with HA stars. Now I've used the uh, exact same equipment but uh, this time I've used uh, dithering to increase the resolution of the image and of course I have used the uh, latest available plugins and processes of PixInsight such as the Blur Exterminator and the Noise Exterminator. We're going to come back to this image later on uh, to compare it to the final result of this image. So in combination with my 2022 data as well as my 2023 data, I have a total of 22.3 hours of data and that is distributed uh, among uh, S2, HA and O3 with my ASI 294mm Pro camera. So these are the uh, calibrated and stacked images uh, for my different filters. This is the HA here. This is my O3 and this is my H, uh, S2 sorry, data. The only thing I've done uh, so far is to do a dynamic crop to crop in those small artifacts that uh, were visible at the edges on some of these frames here. In order to speed things up a bit, in this stage of the video I'm going to show the HA frame and the processing made. Not the S2 and O3, but those were processed exactly the same. So in the linear processing steps I started with the uh, dynamic background extraction. So we can compare that to the uh, original HA here. As you can see I have extracted some of the background out of this making it uh, a bit more easier to distinguish between nebulosity and the background here. After that I ran through the blur exterminator and if we compare the two, you can see if, if we zoom in, for example, here on this star, you can see that the blur exterminator has done its job here by reducing this star somewhat. Might not be that visible when zoomed out all the way here. And next thing I ran through the noise exterminator and that should have made a big difference. If we can look at some background here. 
you can see a clear difference between the left side here without the noise exterminator and the right side here with the noise exterminator. Now this mainly works for the background. We're going to address nebulosity later on in this processing. That basically completes the first of the linear processing because of the blur exterminator and noise exterminator tools. And that saves a lot of time, even though it requires somewhat of a computing power. And you would need to have a fast computer, preferably with a lot of cores and memory to get things speeded up. Next, I manually stretched the images. Personally, I do it with the histogram transformation still, but there are a lot of options. After that, I did the first thing in the nonlinear processing uh, steps, and that is to produce a starless version of all three frames. So we have the HA here without the stars, and the S2 here, and the O3 here. You could, if you want to, uh, process the background here. You can do a range uh, mask with the range selection process and isolate the nebulosity in order to get uh, the background out. But uh, these frames were fairly good in my opinion, so I felt like I did not need to do that in this case. Next step is to make a color image. And I tried two different uh, versions before I decided to go with the uh, standard SHO like I did the last time. I tried the Forex X script here and ended up with this image. I think it's uh, uh, fairly good. It got, uh, it got potential, but I chose not to proceed with this image anyway. So I took the uh, standard regular SHO combination that I did with pixel math and just added the sulfur 2, the H alpha, and the O3 uh, without any formulas whatsoever. I started the processing steps here. I uh, edited the background a bit, removed some of the uh, color in the background here with the curve transformation and saturation. I ran the regular uh, SCNR to remove some of the green in the image. Also inverted the image to remove some of the magenta that might be present as well. Uh, I also did some color masks and isolated the uh, colors of the blue and the red orange and i actually enhanced the colors just a little bit to get that blue and red orange to pop out next step was to do a little bit of a sharpening and uh, i used the multi-scale linear transformation and the unsharp mask processes to do that the result is fairly slightly visible, but if you toggle through undo and uh, redo, you will see uh, the uh, results. Uh, then I did some noise reduction within the nebulosity here using TGV denoise, like I normally do, and I think that worked out fairly well. There is not much visible noise anymore in this image. And we still have some fairly good sharp objects in here, even though my gear, my telescope is uh, somewhat of the uh, low range cost. One final step here was to do some 
more color adjustments just to get more contrast between darks and bright areas as well as the colors and i ended up with uh, the finished starless image uh, looking something like this where i've also made additional adjustments to the background here just to isolate that because when you add stars back into the image here you can get a much brighter image and uh, you, you might introduce artifacts in the region here that is supposed to be empty space next step of course is to try to figure out what to use for stars i did an sho combination for stars i also did a uh, 4xx combination of the stars but i decided that uh, i did not want to use those i'm going to show them to you The 4xx stars look like this and you can see there is a lot of blue color in the 4xx stars and I wanted some warmer stars and I did not want to use HA stars like I did in my first version because then all the stars are uh, bright white and no colors in them. Uh, I did not, however, want to have dominating stars in my image, so I reduced the stars a little bit. You can see the difference between these two here. You can see fewer stars here, and the larger stars are not as large. So I wanted to use reduced stars, and when combining that with my starless image, this is the final result that I got and that can be compared to the last image that I did uh, 2022. So the image to the right here is uh, about 20 hours of data SHO and the image to the left here is 22.3 hours SHO but with dithering as well. So we have some more resolution. And like I said, I used HA stars on the image to the right here. And I used SHO stars, uh, slightly reduced on this image to the left here. We can zoom in on an area here just to compare. Much of the result here will be influenced by the new tools of course like blur exterminator and noise exterminator but i think also that even though i only added about three hours of data that uh, have made a difference and of course my i've had over a year more experience in editing processing these uh, images so that also uh, might have something to do with it. So this was the first object. I have a few more objects that I gathered more data on that I will show you here before the 23-24 season will kick in. And I will start producing uh, images of uh, new uh, objects altogether. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already doing so. If you want to contribute to the production of these videos 
there is an option listed in the video description. Until the next video, I wish you have astro darkness and clear skies.